Dim and limited hunter chapped of the priestess of the red lotus, the nine tailed fox, Mare, in the nation of the land of the fire blossoms, where Maya ruled like a tyrant, the reason she was not easily assassinated was largely due to the significance of her magic beast. Once upon a time, the nine tailed fox had transformed into a poisonous stone that took the lives of anyone who approached her. The reason for this was her deeply rooted distrust in humans due to almost having been killed by them. The nine tailed fox had thus transformed itself into a cursed rock that poisoned every approaching living being. The forest with the poisonous stone was known as the forest of death, deserted and off limits, and so, the nine tailed fox had to live alone, in solitude, for countless years. Then one day, a curious young girl, came to the forest of death, born into a poor family, her appearance was humble, but her intelligent eyes and beautiful black hair were very pretty, she was later known to be a girl named Maya. the girl possessed a mysterious power, enough to recognize the lonely emotions and the long dulled sadness of the fox magic beast that had become a poisonous stone, braving death Maya approached the nine tailed fox which had transformed into a poisonous stone, without hesitation even though she was poisoned by the strong toxin, she constantly healed herself to prevent herself from perishing, gently caressing the rock, it's okay, it's okay her voice and touch, like sunlight splitting through a canopy of trees, illuminated the dark forest, the young girl named Maya, barely keeping herself alive and having already poisoned, continuously stroked the rock with her hands, now faded in color, before Maya collapsed, the nine-tailed fox released her transformation and revealed her true form. The pure white nine-tailed fox shed tears as she was caressed by Maya's touch. Maya smiled broadly, exclaimed how beautiful it was, and then hugged the nine-tailed fox. The nine-tailed fox laid down her hostility towards the young child. Maya often visited the forest of death to meet the nine-tailed fox and shared her everyday stories. Happiness was the fulfillment of absence. That was what the nine tailed fox realized after meeting Maya. Her loneliness had disappeared with happiness being rooted in its place. Maya gave the nine tailed fox such genuine happiness that even the trauma of nearly being killed by a hunting party soon it faded away, however. At some point, Maya stopped visiting the forest. The nine tailed fox waited for Maya. Every day, she waited only for Maya's return. Rain poured, snow fell. Yet, it stood in a spot where she could immediately meet Maya if she came, like a dog waiting for its master, the nine-tailed fox simply passed the time quietly, then, after a long time had passed, on a day when the white snowflakes had thickly covered the forest, Maya came back, but by then, she was no longer the kind little child the nine-tailed fox knew, follow me, I will show you the world I will rule, the girl was adorned in glamorous clothes and expensive looking jewelry. There stood a tyrant, ready to commit cruel acts without hesitation to get what she wanted. You dare to touch my mother, Mana surged. My body became as light as a feather, and my stamina was not only restored but increased to the point of it being never bending. My mana circuit became incredibly robust. The density and amount of mana flowing within were pumped with a terrifying force, sensing an ominous aura. The shadow priestess Elnatona the ethereal instinctively decided that she must protect Maya, the source of her power. Elnatona layered a sturdy black flame protective shield over Maya. Whoosh, an extremely cold chill burst from Isaac, driving away the flame blossom spell cherry blossom, turning the surroundings into a frigid ice field. A heavy force of suffocating mana settled down, that alone almost made Elnatona stagger. The unique trait hunter activated dramatic enhancement of the body and mana, Isaac's mana had grown so powerful that it not only pressed down upon this island but also extended its force over Thesky and the surrounding seas, it's only a matter of time before people flock here however it won't take long to take down that demon, Isaac stretched his right arm to the side, whoosh, dark blue mana gathered in his right hand before expanding and then condensing into a singular point, Isaac stretched out his arm and clenched the mana with his hand as a scyther took form and snugly fit within his grasp. The sounds of chains resounded throughout the dueling ground. It was the Frost Stith, a legendary weapon wielded by the primordial Ice Sovereign. There's one thing you've overlooked. As Isaac narrowly opened his eyes, his skin's hue intensified and his silver hair bristled. Then, 
A deep RS symbolizing the primordial sovereign gently flared out from Isaac, the still passive skill. I sovereign, Elmaton of the Ethereal, upon sensing that Aura couldn't keep her mouth shut, it was evidence of having reached the pinnacle of a single element, Isaac, lifting the frost scythe, said in a scornful tone, I don't have a mother, bitch. Pale blue mana flowed from his red eyes, a harbinger of newly acquired magic. He slammed the end of the frost slithy into the ground. A clear, ringing sound echoed from that point, a clear chill spread in all directions, enveloping the entire dueling ground with a cracking sound. Layers of vivid ice walls rose from the ground, constructing a wide space. Domain expansion the cold transformed the ground into a massive flow and made the world its canvas. A pale blue magic circle was engraved on the beautifully sculpted ice ceiling. Countless brinicles slowly extended downward, dripping with a murderous chill. Within that icy palace, the frosty wind bestowed a hellish cold to those trapped unfortunate enough to be in its embrace. Is this? Elmatona's eyes widened in shock. A strong sense of crisis rang like an alarm from within. Then, the being before her was an art wizard. No, something far more menacing. Feeling his immeasurable power, Elmatona furrowed her three pairs of eyes, her face contorted hideously with revulsion. This place was a freezer of the extreme where violence flowed, a sinister palace of ice. It was Osek's domain, divine sanctum of blooming frost hoosh. The nine tailed fox flames, strengthened by dark manner, exploded in a fury following Elmatona's rage. Black flames scattered about, however. Their power and extreme heat were insufficient to melt the Essie Palace. They barely managed to prevent her feet from freezing to the ground. Elmatona clenched her fists tightly and trembled violently, before Isaac, a demonized being had no chance of victory. Thus, a fire-like anger surged within Elmatona. You insolent fool, Elmatona roared in rage with a bizarre voice. Bright red magic circles unfolded endlessly. Each circle unleashed barrages of an fire magic. Whoosh, crash, massive explosions and black flames poured onto Ezek without ceasing, filling the Essie Palace. Hear me, you arrogant ice wizard. How dare a human defy the natural order? Coveting the realm of Lord Nephid without knowing your place, a shriek close to a wail. Your very existence is a sin clash. Whoosh. The coldness surrounding the space aggressively swirled, instantly freezing the explosion itself, an unusual blue ice mass formed. At that moment, Isaac lightly swung frost slith, and the ice masses enveloping him crumbled away. He was unscathed, just as he had been when first seen. Elmatona was taken aback, not expecting her barrage to be so effortlessly nullified. The laws of physics, which were seen as common sense everywhere else, did not apply here. Why had that man struggled against the priestess just moments before? Why did he deceive her? I see. I understand. Elmatona guessed Isaac's intentions. He must have noticed Elmatona hiding in the priestess's shadow from the start and lured her into revealing herself. Had that man shown his true power from the beginning, Elmatona would have simply gathered valuable information and waited for another opportunity. I sovereign was but a secondary power to him. Revealing his existence was sufficiently justifiable. Look at that ice wizard. Despite being a lowly human, he dared to rival her lord, the evil god, Elmatona, who had lived in shadows and darkness for eons. Thought of the primordial sovereigns, they, too, were unmatched in their arrogance, but never on a level comparable to the evil god. No matter how strong, they knew to uphold the laws of the world. But this arch wizard was different. No, perhaps even the title of Artwizard might be an understatement for this silver-blue-haired man. It's lukewarm. Even a high-density, high-temperature black flame barrage, capable of easily sweeping through Muchin Academy, was nothing more than warming oneself by a distant bonfire in front of Isaac's frigidity. He had already surpassed even the primordial sovereigns. Isaac, the name of a being stronger than any human Elmatona had ever seen, Elmatona clenched her fists tightly, staying here would only result in freezing to death, even if she managed to withstand by emitting flames unrestrainedly. The moment she touched the sharp isicles or brinicles that were gradually descending, the worst cold imaginable would freeze her entire body, leading to a bitter and now it's my turn, Isaac's red eyes, holding a pale blue glow, targeted the enemy. 
and push, feeling a sense of urgency. Elnatone emitted black flames at maximum output. She had to escape somehow. If Isaac wished it, death would come in an instant. Moreover, the chill emitted by that man would surely lead to death upon contact. Elnatona overlaid dark mana on a still fire spell. Void phoenix passed down from the land of the fire blossoms. Behind her, a large black magic circle unfolded, spewing black flames. The flames of darkness danced splendidly, carving a path. Along that path, a phoenix formed of black flames flew. It was a flame concentrated with terrifying mana. The phoenix contained the power to wipe out an entire region if it touched the ground. It was utterly futile. The black phoenix froze in its blazing glory. A silvery continuous line was drawn in the very center, and it was cut in half instantly. What? Abyssal Glacier. I was still ice spell that froze things without restriction. The next move was Frost Slither's unique magic, Absolute Zero. The area carved out by the blade was severed beyond the limits of space with extreme cold infiltrating the gap. Whisk Isaac passed the bisected phoenix and arrived at Elmtona. His speed was as if he had never moved. It was as if he fooled the eyes into thinking he was there the entire time. Startled, Elmtona instinctively poured out black flames in resistance, but slash. Chalalak, as Isaac swung frost stiff, a silver circle tinged with coldness swept across the flames, drawing twice momentarily into the void. Even the black flames were effortlessly severed along the frost slither's path, rendering them powerless. Consequently, Elmatona's vision distorted involuntarily. It was because her body, sliced by the frost slith, had been divided into three pieces. The parts of her body cut by the frost slither's blade immediately froze to its unique magic. The biting coldness tore through Elmatona. Ah, she couldn't give up like this. She reminded herself. Her goal was to eliminate the fairy tale the only being capable of killing the evil god. God, it was a greater cause, if she couldn't defeat him, she would have to leave the task to the next of her kind, and she was certain, in fulfilling that cause, this silver-blue-haired man was an obstacle akin to a giant mountain range. Even a little would do, she had to inflict an irreversible injury on this man, to make it easier for the next of her kind to kill in fairy tale. Almatona let out a bizarre scream as she unfolded five black flame magic circles. Boom, however, Almatona's hope was thwarted by a kick thrown with tremendous speed by Isaac. With a sound akin to an explosion, Almatona's body, now reduced to a bust, was sent flying up to the ceiling. Almatona hit the ceiling of Divine Sanctum of Blooming Frost. The brinicles shattered, scattering beautiful opalescent powder. Up. The moment she touched the icicle, the extreme cold penetrated deep into her entire body. The pale blue magic circles filling the ceiling emitted a deadly light. The coldness intensified. Suddenly, the black flames enveloping Elmatona's body extinguished, and her body froze solid in an instant. The bust of Elmatona now turned into an ice statue and fell downwards. Isaac condensed ice mana in his right hand and stretched out his arm towards the falling bust. Frigid mana overflowed. Choir. Her pale blue flash, faster than sound, momentarily lit up divine sanctum of blooming frost. A loud noise followed in succession, numerous pieces of the frozen Elmatona scattered, rough ice masses soared above Isaac's hand and stuck to the ceiling, Isaac dissolved the ice mass and lowered his arm, within the divine sanctum of blooming frost, his breath turned into a white mist, flowing along with the cold wind. The time it took to defeat Elmatona after activating his domain expansion was just over seconds.